The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Show you the path of life. 
My presence is the fullness of joy. At my right hand, there are pleasures forevermore with me. Amen. Amen. Uh, at this time, I, I always want to give a little bit of time, or as much time as it takes, to give God praise for what he's done for us through our testimonies. And there's always something that we can say to praise God. But it may seem very little, but that testimony might be vital to someone else's salvation. Is there anyone who has a testimony of what God is doing in their life today? Yeah. Go <laughs> oh, ahead, Dale. I smell that good Lord. Just like I said, in opening prayer, just, just an honor to be in this house this day. Amen. To give him glory and the thanks for all the blessings each day. For what he watches over us. And then we seldom realize how he does watch over us. But when that little incident in, in time, well, it takes two seconds or five minutes, and something goes wrong, he's there to cushion the blow, to, 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 to dry our eyes, and, and to calm our fears. Amen. And regardless of what it is, God is with us, the Spirit is within us, just to bring that peace, just to bring that joy, just to know, just, just to have that knowledge that He is God and He loves us. Amen. I just want to thank the Lord. Uh, we've got a convention coming up. Amen. And out of our little church and the outreach that our church has, we now have six women going to that convention. And I think that is mighty powerful what God can do Amen. by reaching out outside the church. This church may not be big. But there is such an outreach ministry that goes on behind the scenes that very few people get to see. But that reach, outreach is so powerful. And they reach, Pastor Sandy reaches so many people and women out there that it's, it's unbelievable. So I just thank the Lord for that outreach that this little church has. And I thank Him for being so obedient. We I had ordered some shirts for all of us to wear, and I was shy of some shirts. And so I reordered, and they hadn't got here, and I was really worried. And my husband said, order more, and I said, no, I'll wait. And I prayed to the Lord the other day. I said, Lord, please, if you can get those shirts here so we can all be alive, and if you can't, then I'll figure something out about it. We came home yesterday, and all of our shirts were there to wear to this convention. And you can Amen. imagine how happy I was to yeah. praise the Lord and thank Him. That He listens to the smallest little things. Yep. Not just it's the important. Big, but the small, the little, the tiny, the gigantic. So I just have to praise Him and thank Him for being in my life. Amen. Because I don't know where I'd be without Him. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, you talk about a size the number and that we might have people. And you know, as a side note for me, Jesus was the one. And he had eleven followers. Not a very big crowd of people. The eleven plus Jesus has touched millions and millions and millions of people over the years. So it's not really the size, it's the impact, it's your spirit, it's the ability to uh, bring the presence of Christ around you that reaches others. So our size is, is important, but when God is in it, it doesn't take a whole lot to make it go forward. Amen. 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 I just want to thank God for uh, the privilege of being here today. Uh, last week, Pastor Sandy touched on the, uh, the effects of the ascension and the importance of it. And I want to continue that message today. Um, but, so we're going to go ahead and have our worship songs to bring us into the Spirit of God. Hey. Again, these songs are not our songs. We have not written these songs, but we extend our thanks to those who 
allow us to sing these songs to bring praises to God. Amen? Amen. 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 Can you stand with me if you can and sing the songs with us to bring praise and glory to God? The first one is how big thou art.
day that we will be in humble admiration. We we'll fall before His feet. Amen. 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 Jesus now. 
you'd like to follow along with us in your Bibles today, we're going to be in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. There's a couple of areas I'm going to go into before we get to that point. But I just want to share one of the songs. You know, when you walk in to the sanctuary, when you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know you're in God's house. That song, that when you walk in, and you feel that presence, it's a presence like you cannot compare to anything else. Amen. I thank God for that. I thank for this moment that we've had with God just in our music and in our offerings. Is, like I said, my cup, it runs over. I cannot outbid God. None of us can. The blessings He wants to pour upon us is immeasurable. He is our defender. He is there constantly defending us. Jesus is the intercessor for us to the Father. He knows all of our needs. He knows everything about us. Because not only did he come to this earth in human form, but he also was all man and all God, but he endured everything that we could endure. So he knows everything about us. And he does defend us. He goes to the Father. He is the intercessor for us. And all the things that go on in our lives. He pleads our case to the Father. For the blood that he shed. For our sins. In Psalms 68.5. Well, go up a little bit further up to 4. Sing to God. Sing praises. To his name, exalt him who rise on the cloud by his name and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, a defender of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary, solitary in the families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in the dry land. We know that God is our defender. We know that He is the one who takes care of us. I want to go to, over to Hebrews for a minute. Hebrews chapter 7, 25. Hebrews chapter 25. back to 22 on this. But so much more Jesus has become a surely of better covenant. Also there were many priests. Now, Jesus is the ultimate priest. But because they were prevented by death from continuing they were unable to fulfill everything they were going to do. But he, Jesus, because he, Jesus, continues forever, has an unchanged priesthood. Therefore, Jesus is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, Jesus. Since he is, always lives to make the intercession for them. We talked about that just a moment ago. He is our intercessor. He is the one who defends us. He's our, he is our lawyer, our counselor. Now after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he walked among the people. He revealed himself to many people. He was on this earth for 40 days. I can only 
be with you, John. I cannot be over here with the others at the same time. I must ascend to heaven to be with the Father at the right hand to be your defender, your counselor, your intercessor. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he is the one who will dwell in each and every one of you. Therefore, he is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He dwells every place. He sees everything all at once. He is with every individual that accepts him throughout the world. And one of the key factors in our relationship with Christ is the Holy Spirit. But if we don't know the Holy Spirit, we, we can walk, we can read the Bible, we can do our best. But without the counsel of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us to make us have that Christ-like character, we cannot fulfill the mission that God would have us. So we need to know the Father, the Creator, my Almighty God. We need to know Jesus Christ, the Savior. We need to know the Holy Spirit. That's one of the reasons that the ascension was so important when Jesus left to be with the Father and the Holy Spirit was sent. But that was one of the key things that we needed because as people without counsel from God, we could not, we couldn't make it. Acts 1 through 3. The former account I made of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive Jesus presents himself alive after his crucifixion and the resurrection just as he told the apostles that he would do. After this suffering by many, inflammable, this is an infallible proof being seen by them during the 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So here we are. Jesus is resurrected. He is with his disciples. The Holy He's talked to them about the Holy Spirit and the importance of it, as just so as it is important to us today. He emphasizes to them the things of the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So there again, Jesus reinforces the emphasis on the Holy Spirit, the gifts from the Father, to help them, to counsel them. I'm going to, I'm going to turn over to uh, Matthew 27. You don't have to turn here. You can stay where you're at if you like. Matthew 27, verses 50, starting at 51. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. And the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. And the graves, listen, the graves, were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were risen. And the coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurions, the Roman soldiers, and those with him who were, who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they were feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. So we 
we're back up here to 52, not only was Jesus had been resurrected from the dead, but there were many saints. The graves broke open. And the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised up and coming out of the graves. They went to Jerusalem and the holy city and appeared to many. What more evidence, again, do we need that Jesus Christ is real? He is the risen Lord. Here, not only the saints were risen from the dead, and many people seen that. Witnesses, the account of people who have been dead for who knows how long were walking the earth. So many times people would challenge you and ask you, you know, what, what is your proof? Well, it's right here in God's Word. The evidence, not only biblically, but historically. You go into secular history, all the accounts that are here in the Bible are in secular history. We need to know that everything that the Bible has talked about is true. And as Jesus walked the earth after his resurrection, and many, many people seen him, and then the ascension came. The importance of all of this is that it brings us salvation, it brings us sanctification. As we accept Christ in our lives as our Lord and Savior, we are sanctified holy to be set apart for the divine purpose of God. Each and every one of us when our hearts are right and we accept Christ, truly we are sanctified by God himself through the Holy Spirit. And as we strive to learn more about him and draw closer to him, our lives will be changed. It's not always, as I say, well, it'll all everything be perfect. No, it won't. Because we live in a fallen world. But as we have Christ beside us and we walk with the Holy Spirit, he will give us that Christ-like character within us. And as Jesus sets with the Father through our prayers, He goes to the Father as our intercessor. And the Holy Spirit will counsel us for everything that He does comes from Jesus. He counsels us in the way we should go and the things we should do. Truly, He is our defender. And as it continues on, can you imagine the awe of the people at that time? Forty days after his crucifixion, that his resurrection, Christ is alive. He's walking on the earth. And to repeat myself again, but as they raised up the fallen saints, the power of God is so present there. And there again, even the, the disciples were at an all. We had Timothy, um, and then we had Thomas, the one who doubted Jesus himself. But Jesus told him, touch me. I'm in flesh. I'm not in the spirit. Evidence again. I meant to bring something here today, and I forgot to bring it. But the evidence... Of Christ is abundant throughout the world every day. We see it. Sometimes we don't recognize it. When we lived down in Jacksonville, Florida, on the Passover, we went down to the ocean. And there's a fish there. It's called a sail cat fish. It's actually, correctly, it's, it's a sail cat. And when this fish comes up on the shore, only during the Passover, after the seagulls devour the meat from that fish, the skull of the fish is left. And that skull is an exact replica of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. In that skull, you flip it up, and you'll see Jesus on the cross. The shield of David is there. You'll see 
and you shake it, and you can hear the dice rolling inside that skull. The dice, the lots that they tossed for Jesus' is rolled. I'm going to bring that with me next week and just introduce you to that. But what, you know, the, if we don't praise him, it says to us the trees and the rocks, even the creatures of the earth will cry out and claim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What, how much more evidence do we need every day? I mean, here we are, we have a fish that lives in the ocean. God has created everything. When this fish is up on the, on the shore, and you can only find this particular fish on the shore in the skull during the Passover. That's no coincidence. Once the Passover is done, you go down to the beach, you can't find one of them. I ask you, world, how much more evidence do you need if Jesus is everywhere? God is present through all his creation. Do not deny the truth. Seek it. Look for it. Study it. Many have tried to disprove his word, and many have come to find that it is the truth. But the importance that I want to bring to you today through Matthew and Luke and John is that as we accept Christ into our lives and read his word God will reveal his truth to us but we have to be willing to study his word to have a relationship with him. So each and every one of us has that responsibility. We have the responsibility to reach out to others and spread the word. But just think about that for a minute. If you were there and Jesus was walking the earth, what would be your reaction? If you've seen someone that was raised up from the dead who you loved was walking the earth, how much more evidence would you need? But God does not need to prove himself, for he is God, and he has proved himself throughout time. So this is a kind of a short message today, but I think it's very important that we understand that the Trinity is our key to our salvation. We have to know all three to obtain that salvation. We have to know God the Father, who gave all authority to God the Son over all of heaven and all of earth and created all those things and gave them to Him. And God was faithful to send the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, as Jesus ascended to heaven so that we would have a guidance, we would have a, a moral compass, if you call it, want to call it that, to determine what's right and what's wrong, biblically, not through man's laws or through man's eyes, but through God's eyes. We need to understand that. So as we, again, give our lives to Christ, we build on that relationship. We study God's word. And there are things that we're not going to understand right away. But when the time is right, God will turn that light on. And you will, you'll know it when the time comes, when he feels you're ready for it. So you don't need to be like this person or like that person. You just need to be you. Because God has made each and every one of us specific in the way he wants us to be. So there again, just remember, as you grow in Christ, all the truth will be revealed to you, the direction God has for you. And as you pray with him daily, you build that relationship. This can't just be a once a week or once a month thing. It's, as we 
stay in this building today. We're, we're thankful for the blessing of having a place to come to be with God. But He's with us outside the doors, everywhere in the world, every place we go, our workplace, the stores, even if we're driving in our car and somebody upsets us on the top of the road. We know that happens. We need to think godly thoughts. So, Lord, we just thank you today for this message. I pray, Father, that uh, the message that you had intended for us to have today has gone out. And those whose heart it is to touch has touched it. I pray, Lord, that uh, we can be faithful, that we stand fast on your word, that each and every one of us who know you now at the end of time, will be there, and you will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, we pray that we're able to reach others for you, to save the lost. I know that's our mission, and it should not be our job, it should be our compassion and our heart. And if we consider this a job, we can't endure it. But if we have a passion, a love for the message of Christ, we know, Lord, that it can be done and it will be done. And you use each and every one of us to help them build the kingdom. We thank you, Lord. And we ask for a blessing in these areas of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. For answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. My grandfather used to say, God is with us, and God will always be with us. Every time that we had the Lost Resistance Army or the LRA, we are in a village. It was fear, the fear of being abducted, 
and being trained to become child soldiers. All the huts were burnt to the ground. I felt hopeless. No food, no water. It sent me into silence. My grandfather used to give us candy for memorizing Bible verses. It gave me hope. When the war intensified, my grandfather put me on a bus to live with my mother. My mother did not share much about her life because she had her own struggles. But I remember this Saturday, she woke me up and she said, I'm taking you to church. I saw children laughing. I had no idea what was going on, but I knew this was a good thing. Give that smile. Malakwa, beautiful. And my life was forever changed. That same month, I got a letter from my husband and wife and the letter said they love me. And at that moment, I had hope that everything would be okay. Growing up, my compassion sponsors encouraged me and continually spoke truth into my life. The Compassion Project became a place of healing and restoration. It was a place of refuge for me. I got medical care. I got an education, and it became a great reminder of the Jesus that my grandfather introduced me to at the age of five. If you're thinking about sponsoring a child, I would say act, sponsor a child because for me, my life was forever changed. And you can do that too. Candy man can cause he mixes it with love, makes the 
Warm wishes from all of us at Parkview Health for a happy, healthy holiday season. to Wesley TV on YouTube. How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art And when I think that God, His Son, not sparing. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made i see the stars i hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the world and forest glades I wander 
and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think, that God, His Son not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on a cross, my burdens gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art how great thou They will be the first ones out the gate. Do not follow too close because we just had a collision out here just a second ago. That's number one and number two. Number three. Moses Bay Pet Pete. There's also no bumper cars, okay? They're not bumper cars. They are go guards. It's very dangerous when you try to play bumper cars with these. They're not bumper cars, they're go cars. Okay, that's my PSA for today, people. Go have fun and be safe. Later, guys. Hi, my name is Evelyn, and I am the one that crashed the go car. I am okay. I just have this little goose egg right here. <laughs> but I am okay.
okay. And what happened was that I was turning this way to go into the um to go around the lap go around the like the lap thing one more time and it like kind of like let I kind of let go of it and it like turned all the way around and it crashed into the wall. But I am okay. And be careful when you're riding those go karts. Okay, bye. But then again, we thank those who have written it to praise God and allow us to do the same with their music. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. See the Lord and His train fills the temple. Thank you, Lord. See the Lord, He is high as I live in Thank you. Amen. Good. 
after all. When my sins have been forgiven. Amen. He's calling you tonight. Whom shall I say? Who shall he say? Will you answer him? I will go. Will you answer him? I